So this is gonna be some world of fair review on Rikia Mori season 7 episode 1. So Justin Roiland, one of the co-creators of uh, Rikia Mori was uh, absent from this episode because they they fired him, I guess they, they removed him because of some allegations. The thing is that a charge against Roiland was actually dropped because of the lack of evidence but they still f- fired him. I, I don't think there was any substantial proof any of the allegations were true and also again it's proven that he's not guilty so it's kind of bizarre that he was still fired it's, it's like a journey type situ- situation over here it's usually the case whenever the, someone who's creative and successful usually people want to put them down and it was uh, as as far as the voice was concerned brought you a coffee i can synthesize coffee you don't need to make excuses to yeah come i need see to me. say that so i didn't even bring a cup i didn't think it was uh that bad. I mean, obviously, it was a little different because Justin Rowland used to voice Rick. So it did sound a little different, but it wasn't really a deal breaker for me for of the show. But still, I could still feel the difference. I did prefer Justin Rowland over to over is now voicing Rick. But the main selling point of Rick and Morty is uh, writing. And I gotta say, it did fall a little flat, at least for this episode. I mean, to be honest, it's, it has been a downward trend for Rick and Morty after season four i think at least for me because this uh, from season one to four the thing was the plot points were mostly very dumb but the thing was they were executed in a in a very smart way so it was both dumb and smart at the same time but now this rikamori is just kind of dumb without the smartness so that actually made the show intriguing and fun to watch and very entertaining there's definitely been a downward trend when it comes to quality and rikamori and this episode wasn't an wasn't really an exception for exception to that. I say two I think a little worse than most of the episodes from upwards from season five to six. This episode was this episode was a little too linear and a little too predictable. And the plot point wasn't that interesting either. The thing was that from season one to four, the scientific um, quarks were the plot point. But now it became more of a more of a gimmick rather than plot point and it's not that fun and most of the gimmicks do feel like gimmicks you know what i mean it doesn't feel organic or warranted mostly feels like they they did the gimmick so that they could say they did the scientific gimmick gimmick or scientific cockiness like the robot for instance activating sentience uploading business Unfinished business detected. Terminating body. It it didn't feel organic. I just felt like they just slapped that on the episode just to say they they did something unique. But the problem is it didn't really have any substance. Like again, season one to four, they used to do gimmicky scientific stuff, but it felt organic and actually it did something in the episode. But now it just genuinely feels like just a gimmick. So the MC for this episode was uh, Poopy Butler. It was uh, again, from my perspective at least, his introduction was mostly as a gag character. It was not supposed to be taken seriously. That's the point of his character. But apparently, the, the writers thought it was supposed to. He can be an MC in an episode. He can be. It's, it's just not that funny to listen to. In the long run, the short term, he is funny. Like they said, too much of it. Too much of a good thing is bad. Not that he was that good of a character, but still. It, and one of the main reasons for this is, I guess, absence of Roiland. I know they say Roiland didn't have a lot of influence over the writing for a while, but I mean, oh, maybe officially he didn't have any influence, but unofficially probably nudged them in the right direction in a sense. And because he was definitely not involved, it, did, it wasn't as funny. As, as the previous episodes, I think Rukem Moji's quality went down after s- f- season 4 anyways, but still, I was hoping they could turn it around, but I guess with the absence of Royland, it's, it's even bigger question mark right now, whether they can actually turn it around. So anyways, the MC for this episode is obviously Poopy Bottle, I'm gonna just call him P from now on. He is having relationship issues and so he is drinking himself to essentially doom. And the family wants him to leave the house because he has been staying there for a long time. And that's the entire plot of the movie. Again, it's, everything becomes really predictable. I mean, oh, 
so it's not as fun and and uh, one thing the one main thing is that is that P is very manipulative and he knows what's up but he, but he knows how to manipulate people to in a way that they do what he wants to do that was very interesting that's what... focusing okay that's it morty find your grandfather while i go talk to our house guest mr poopy butthole this has gone far enough I agree, Beth. I'm a piece of garbage. Can you boost me up so I can hook my belt to the ceiling fan? <sighs> it all started when Beth shot me. I said I was sorry. I know. It tore you up inside like a bullet. It was an accident. We need to have a hang with Poopy Butthole and talk to him about his drinking. Perhaps this wasn't the best place to do this, Rick. What are you talking about? This is a great place to celebrate my birthday. 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 Your birthday. Oh, we! I can't believe y'all remembered. I was at the end of my rope thinking I'd worn out all my welcomes. Thanks for doing all this, Rick. Uh, of course, Mr. PB. A real friend would have known it's not my birthday. Why would you pretend it was your birthday? You think I don't know a half-assed intervention when I see one coming? Ho -ho. But other than that, he was really annoying. It was a really annoying character, especially his voice. The fact that he keeps on saying his... So I guess a family conference trip to get rid of P. So his solution to that was to try and aunt P into leaving. Again, this was one of the gimmicks I was talking about, about the robot. He essentially made a sentient robot just to make it into a ghost. Family, I present to you Robo Ghost. Rick. Your plan oh, is boy, to scare him away. Activating sentience. Uploading business. Unfinished business detected. Terminating body. <laughs> Again, just a gimmick. I mean, they could have made an entire episode of, episode on that, but they rather made a gimmick of that. But okay. Then Rick gathers all his friends and tries to uh, break the news by making a confrontation with P. And they go into a restaurant in honor. Appreciate you guys taking me out. It's been a rough week. Welcome to Fuck Yous. My name is Mart and fuck you. See, at Fuck Yous, we lightly tease our customers. Look at this depressed pencil eraser. Did some middle schooler stick you up a cat's asshole? I bet you had everything, and you watched it slip through your powerless little fingers like the sands of time. Be right back to take your order, folks. Or should I say, fucks? What are friends for? Heard we got a birthday boy. Y yeah, but please don't sing or- yeah! ah! Fuck you, shithead. <laughs> yeah, that sure is a smart hat. Again, another gimmick. Apparently, uh, the waiter, or the waiter's job is to essentially demean everyone who comes through the bar. I mean, some people do like that, but I wondered, I wonder about the employment process or and a training process that the wait waiters have to go through to get certified by the restaurant. Because I mean, you have to have a lot of skill to demean people. It's not, it's not as easy as people think. So, oh. again, another gimmick. It's not that fun. It would have worked if this was like opposite world or something of that sort, but it's a normal route and apparently the restaurant waiters have to learn skills that uh, them demean their customers and it works, I guess, somehow. And then, then again, uh, P tries to manipulate them into thinking that it's his birthday, which it isn't, but be because Rick doesn't give a half, he, he doesn't really remember P's birthday, so he actually does think it's his birthday and then they try to party and they get his neighbor to come with them because I guess apparently they I guess they want someone who's not drunk to go along with them so that they, he can I don't know what drive his portal and there was a one side plot in this in this episode I, like I said this is a linear episode without many side plots or any other storylines but I mean again the side plot was kind of really dumb essentially when when the when the neighbor is taken neighbor is essentially abducted from from his house he had kept the uh, lawnmower activated and apparently it became indestructible why I am see this is one of the other gimmicks of the episode but makes no sense why is just a lawnmower indestructible they don't give explanations so I still don't know why it's indestructible again another gimmick then anyhow they go on to party 
Then they meet up with Hugh Jackman and apparently he's a jerk for some reason. Why is he a jerk? I don't know, but he's a jerk. And then the episode revolves around P trying to get back his uh, wife who he apparently is tracking with the help of a protector. I don't know how they got the rights to him, but um, then when he gets to the gets to his wife's entrance and Hugh Jackman does this dance, it's he finds out that the guy he hired to keep track of his wife is actually banging his wife. So that's that. <laughs> and he's done it, be, trying to beat beat the predator somehow and almost winning. Again, another gimmick. It's, like I said, it's gimmick upon gimmick. It doesn't make it all sense. And then at the end, everyone does a fade effect. And Rick starts to explain that it's not what they think, it's not. The invisibility is just a normal drug that makes them invisible. Oh, here, I forgot to give you a fading pill. Great for hangovers. And just to clarify, I, I had to take an unfading pill to counteract the original fading pill I just took. Uh, okay. And if you're hung up on why the taxi disappeared, the, the pills aren't sentient, but they do detect human coverings, so it saw the taxi as some sort of large overcoat. Doesn't matter. But it isn't that you had to say that. It's kind of lame. Again, another gimmick, and he, he tells the camera in fo without breaking the fourth wall, by breaking the fourth wall in a sense. Like even the P was like, why are you saying this to me, man? Like it's a gimmick, come on gimmick. I mean, he never had to say anything about the pill, and the pill makes no sense either, but there you go, another gimmick upon gimmick. So I feel like this uh, this episode was one of the worst episodes in the entirety of Rick series, and I was, I'm also counting the episode with the giant floating baby. And also the episode with the cross. I mean, some people might think the cross was a very genuine and heartfelt episode, but for me it was kind of lame. They kind of downsized Rick and made him too into fe feelings. Kind of, it was kind of bizarre. I mean, his point being, this is what, I think this is one of the worst episodes in the Rick series. I gotta say, the ending was the ending was the worst part of the episode. There is, it almost felt like. The, and there was no point to the whole episode. I mean, technically, it did resolve the wife issue, I guess. But overall, it I mean, I'd never care about the wife issue. So in a sense, it, there was no point to the episode. Again, like I said, P was never supposed to be serious character. He was just a gag character who was very funny in short bursts. But uh, with the whole episode revolving around him, it's not so funny anymore. So again, the whole, the, and with uh, Rick, explaining the pill it, again the pill makes no sense the entire uh, sequence doesn't make any sense like i said overall the episode was one of the worst in rick's rick series the thing is that i did watch the second episode and the second episode wasn't too bad comparatively to the first one actually it was kind of good this one episode i do hope it's better